Thank you so much for taking your time to chat with us today, Anna. So I have Anna Seymour here, who is a um, who has her degree in occupational therapy and graduated from USC in uh, 2016. And she's kind enough to take her time from Cairns this morning to um, chat to me about her um, alumni story and, and what she's sort of learned in, in her time out of uni so far and to hopefully provide um, students with some perspectives of um, uh, her, uh, of the career journey and, and a little bit of advice that might, um, that might help them out along the way. So thank you very much, Anna, for taking your time today. We really appreciate it. No worries. My pleasure. Yeah. Um, so just, just sort of starting off with, um, was uni always on the cards for you at the, at the beginning? Was it something you always, you knew you always wanted to go to uni? And in particular, was occupational therapy kind of the, the area that you knew you wanted to, to study and so yeah, how did, how did you end up at uni and, and was occupational therapy what you wanted to do right off the bat? Um, I didn't know anything about occupational therapy until um, probably grade 12 when I was looking at options <laughs> yep. for allied health. Um, I was quite sure that I wanted to go to uni. Um, I was pretty inspired by my parents, um, one who persisted through a degree he didn't want to do to get to where he needed to be. Um, yep. And then my mum was studying at uni and still is studying at uni oh, at wow. USC. And throughout what was happening and I thought, well, if she can do it, I think I can. So I thought it was an achievable thing. and. Because I wanted to go into either health or teaching land, I knew that I needed to complete a university degree for that. Yep. Um, it, it, uni was on the cards, but wasn't sure that OT was the path that I would take. Right, right. And so what, um, what, what inspired you to get into OT? So you're sort of debating between health and teaching, and you ended up going down the health route, obviously. So what was it about health, and what was it about occupational therapy that... Um, that triggered it for you, that made you want to do it? Um, yeah, well, I took a year off after school yep. um, to do some further study um, outside the uni system. So what, did you, what did you study there? I studied maths, B, and chemistry. Right. So I studied two difficult subjects that I did um, because I wanted to go more down the arts path. Um, and I really thought that I might become a, a drama teacher. Right. But I just so enjoyed conversations with my mum, who was a nurse, um, my partner now, who is a doctor, about health and how the human body worked. If I heard you correctly, you, you did a bit of stuff in arts as well, or you volunteered, or what, it, what were you saying you did? Yeah, I volunteered. So I did, the, I did objects, and while I was also, I did those in Brisbane. While I was in Brisbane, I volunteered at the Royal Brisbane Children's Hospital. Ah, okay. Which moved to, now changed to the Lady Salento Children's Hospital. Um, so I continued doing that for three years, but I was a, uh, I was kind of a playmate for sick children um, and their parents too. I, I, I would play games with kids. Yep. Um, I would talk to parents. I would help them around the hospital and help them play groups. And from that, I knew that I wanted to be with people that had health things going on. I love talking with children. I love talking with um, And I thought, I feel like hospital is where my people are. Yeah, interesting. So, so, so that was I, a big learning experience for you. Oh, yeah. that I wanted to be in health, yep. um, working alongside people while or got well or with problem solved, what was happening with them. Yeah, right. So, yeah. so, so that was a little spark then, you know, that, that sort of year sort of sidetrack. Yeah. It's not, definitely not going backwards anyway, but just sort of stepping side to side. 
and, and kind of gaining a little bit of perspective in that year between finishing school and then making a decision about what you wanted to do next, that was really helpful to you. And it was just, it was lovely that I'd chosen something that I was interested in. Uh, I, after having discussions with my parents, like my parents about what an OT might do, my mum's best friend who was an OT, I thought, oh man, I think this is the this is the role that will allow me to have those interactions and to um, learn about the human body and yep. apply that in some way. So it's really really just kind of talking to people and fleshing things out is what kind of helped you sort of start start your path in the beginning and sort of chart your fat your path into um, into OT and, and uni eventually. Yeah, definitely. Yep. I think I think. Um, it's like when you're deciding on where your life journey might take you and what career you want, very important to speak with people who know you well yep. um, and bring out things that you find valuable. Um, particularly when you're young, you can be, you can be fairly self-aware, but I think others sometimes are able to say, hey, you're really good at this or... Did you realize how much you enjoyed that? Um, yeah. Or remember this time when you didn't like like participating in that? Um, yeah, so conversations really helped me um, work out where my first few steps would be yeah, yeah, anyway, career-wise. That's interesting because you're not always really self-aware. You don't always kind of, you don't always realize your own sort of strengths and weaknesses. So it's good to kind of have people that know you but can offer you an, an objective opinion and, and help you sort of set that course and I think that's really good perspective and um, so so as you moved into your degree and everything what what did you enjoy the most about studying occupational therapy and what do you think of some of the most uh, within your degree what are some of the most valuable kind of skill sets that you picked up while you were studying? I think the kind of the three big things that kept me going and um, were really in inspiring me to to decide what area I wanted to go in and to to get through things yep. um, were my lecturers. The the OT team are just so invested in their students, so passionate about what they do. Um, That's good to hear. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. Um, and to this day, I still think um, I'm still inspired by a few of my lecturers within OT um, to, to be evidence-based, to be very thoughtful, to value my team members, that they're, they're things that I could see working um, within their team and when they were talking to us. And I think that fed into me feeling like I was in the right place um, mm. and feeling like I could develop the skills that they wanted us to develop, Yeah, or, you know, nurture. Uh, I think the particular skills USC was very good at nurturing for me was uh, like a sense of um, a sense of like social justice and giving back to the community, being a community-minded person and seeing the value in that. Yeah. We had a um, lovely lady Penny who was our placement coordinator um, and she was pretty instrumental in listening to what students would like to get out of placements and linking them up with the right people or the right places for that to happen. Um, I had a really wonderful experience that kind of shaped where I went to next after uni. Um, I went to Penny and said oh, I'd really like to have a rural placement and experience rural. OT life and she said yep sure um, if you can afford so we, we just went a bit um, glitchy there but that's all right so what you're saying so you were you were, this is a really interesting area in fact so you you went to your placement coordinator and you said I want to go out into a rural setting and um, yeah. and and she arranged that for you provided that you know you could afford to go out there and with your accommodation and that sort of stuff yeah. and and, and why did you yeah. want to? Why did you want to do that? And what did you? What did you learn from that? What sort of skills and knowledge did you pick up going to a rural setting? So I wanted to do that because I wanted to 
wanted to experience what a rural OT, uh, well, um, I went to Mackay, so it wasn't incredibly rural, yeah. um, but I, I wanted one to know that I could do that because that was my interest area. When I was doing assignments, I tended to lean towards um, community roles, emerging roles and rural OT roles. Um, and I, I had just had through other students and other people in my life who had gone through allied health and done a rural placement that, that was where they met the best kind of teaching they got exposed to so much more than they would have in a, in a city town. Um, and can I just stop you there for a second? What do you mean got exposed yeah. to so much more? What did you get exposed to that you, you couldn't be exposed to in, in maybe more of a more of a urban type setting? And, and, and again, what was it? Was it certain skills you were uh, exposed to? Certain learning experiences you were exposed to? What what were that? What was that about? Uh, within my placement, I got to move around the hospital quite a lot. Um, it, uh, Mackay Base Hospital has a lot of different medical areas and specialties. Um, I think my my OT clinical supervisor was instrumental in allowing that to happen. But she said, "Hey, if you want to be a rural OT, you're going to need to um, have a glimpse at all walks of OT life." Yeah. Um, so I got to hang out in the rehab ward. Got to hang out with a community OT surgical and medical places. I, I think that um, if I was, say, in Brisbane or maybe even on the Sunshine Coast in a hospital there or a medical clinic, that flexibility wouldn't have happened. Yeah. Um, and the people that I met seemed to be at adventure seekers um, and really community-minded people. They weren't, they weren't keen to be in a big city. Um, they really enjoyed having days that were very diverse and could change at the drop of their hat. I was going to um, say, that's, was, um, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. That's, that's one of the words that instantly has popped in my head is that diversity. So, you know, that's something that, that those, that diversity and variety of learning experiences is something that you seem to, to be looking for and, and really, really valued from that experience in, in the rural setting there in Mackay. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I was going to say, I, needed to as it just it just fell into place I needed to uh, provide OT support for people at a rural town Serena about an hour's drive uh, half an hour's drive out of Mackay one day a week for several times during my placement and they those were the days where the the times I'd been thrown into different places at the medical hospital all needed to come together. Yeah. People would walk in saying, oh, I have a hand injury, I'm recovering from a stroke, um, can you do a cognitive assessment on this person? All of the facets of OT and what I'd learnt kind of needed to all come together. <laughs> yeah. um, and how did, that make yeah. you, how did that make you feel? Was it overwhelming? Did you just take it in stride and yeah. say, I've just got to do this? Yeah, I think I think I definitely swam rather than sung. Um, I asked a lot of questions. Yeah. Uh, I did a lot of research. Stays in Serena. Um, I did feel overwhelmed, um, but I also thought this is this is a great challenge, and this is what it, what needs to happen on placements. This is how you grow. Yep. Um, I've just been able to reflect on that and extend myself a bit further in my own role because yeah. I've had that experience at placement um, and have thought, well, that actually went okay. Um, yeah. I know that there will be times I do sink, but that success means that I can do can do these things. Yeah, and, and is it and in, is it is it okay to? Um, to, to sink sometimes, is that all right? You really you need to be resilient. And the biggest, the biggest kind of life learnings have come from, um, not necessarily big failures, but, but not having something go the way you expected. 
Yeah. And, and just to be just to be prepared for that, that's just the nature of it. And you've just got to um, adapt and, and be ready to think on your feet and problem solve. And I think too, um, just with the process of getting a job and uh, initially problem solving uh, while you're getting used to a role, it's really important that you have had think moments. Yep. Uh, if yeah, because I think. Um, it becomes even more intimidating when you're in a role when you I just have had friends who said, oh, my placements went really well and um, I didn't push myself too hard, my supervisor didn't push me too hard and they've got into their, their OT journey, they've had big things happen and they've fallen apart for a little while because yeah. they haven't had practice at experiencing that. So, so that, um, that aspect of your degree, that placement aspect in particular, that time when you were at Royal, that, that sounds like it was a very instrumental um, component of your degree that sort of helped shape where, you, where you've ended up now and, uh, and something that you can probably draw on a lot now from, th from that experience. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I think the uni was very, my lecturers would talk about emerging roles and the value of taking on things that are a bit more challenging or left of field. Uh, so I think that they, that the emphasis in parts of my degree really helped shape my skill set to prepare me for those roles. Oh, that's, that's really good so to hear. Thinking, you know, this is possible, think about it. Yeah. And I did. Now that's, that, I mean, that's again, really, a really nice sort of story and really nice, um, I guess, um, example of, of how your degree does prepare you for, for your future transition. And, and, and moving into that to where you are now into, into Cairns. Um, so what is your role now um, in Cairns? So I am an OT with, with, within the community and I service children. Uh, needing to access therapy because they're, they have developmental issues going on, um, they might have a diagnosed disability, they might just need some extra support with getting ready for school or coping with school. Uh, so I'm a yeah. community paediatrics OT. What, what drove you to the paediatric side of things? Why, why did you... Why were you driven towards children or were you driven towards children or were, was it just sort of a job that came up? Um, how did that happen? I, great question. I really enjoyed working with families and I've really, really got along well with children, um, both during my volunteering experience and my personal experience. Uh, I knew before I started OT that I'd like to work with kids and, and their parents. And throughout my degree, I just kept coming back to that and would say where do you want to work yeah. after uni I would always think oh in the community with kids yeah. <laughs> or in a hospital with kids yeah I think that I have a similar energy to to a child um, <laughs> in a good way obviously <laughs> I, yeah I, I like having a laugh I like playing yeah um really enjoy seeing them experience success and throughout my uni degree, I just kept coming back to that. So when it came to choosing a job, I thought, right, I would really, really love to go into this very competitive area <laughs> and I'll be with move, um, move to get to get my job. So this, I applied for the position that I'm currently in um, and was successful. So it was, it was a dream position. Yeah, th and that's, that's really incredible because not a lot of people get that opportunity and um, in speaking to other OT alumni, you know, they have to go through various different positions before they ended up that. So that's, that's um, yeah, quite fortuitous that you ended up there. And, and, and what, was it, what was it like applying for the job? Was it difficult? How did you manage that? What was the process like? I decided to be fairly proactive. And what do you mean, what do you mean by that? manager now um, and introduced myself um, and had questions about the position. So when I saw the position description, I thought, that sounds great. Yep. I want to know more and I 
want to, I want them to know that I'm confident enough to call them and that I am serious about this job and have questions about this position. So I contacted him, had a great conversation, um, and then I don't think I had anyone look through my CV in OT land, yeah. but I had my partner and my mother look over what, yeah. what I did because it was kind of the it was the second job that I'd actually applied for. Yep. Um, so I was still new to how to present yourself and wanted to make sure that I didn't have any failings. So I had others around me help with yep. that process. Um, and then I was offered a Skype interview and I said, no, I'm coming up to you. I'm really, I really want to meet the people who might be my future colleagues. So I flew up to Cairns, um, I interviewed up here, um, and then they called me soon after that to say, thank you so much for coming up and take the position. So I feel like I was fairly assertive yeah. in that application process. Well, it's just so you don't, you don't become kind of another um, just digital CV in the queue, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't think my CV looked particularly special. In retrospect, I could yep. have fancied it up a little bit by putting some colour into it. I'm not sure if I wanted to have my face on it. Yep. I think people uh, subconsciously make judgments about how you would fit. And for my Absolutely. it would have been detrimental for me probably to put my face up on my CV because I'm one of the only white girls in my office, <laughs> if that makes sense. That's it. No, that's, that's, it's an interesting point and interesting perspective. Um, there's no doubt about that. And um, in that interview process with him, how much did you sort of draw upon your experiences from Pract and the skills that you picked up, particularly from maybe the rural setting that you were able to instill the confidence in them that you could, you could perform the position? Oh, hugely. I think, I think my final placement um, well, one confirmed that I would be in a rural position or an emerging position. Um, and I was able to very confidently say that I felt like I could handle this new position. Uh, I drew on my kids' experience a lot. I chose two placements out of my three to be within kids because I knew that was my preferred um, area kind of OT role oh. yeah preferred area um, and my third placement was a mix of peep and adults and that gave me great skills that I could transfer into the role that I had yeah and how yeah how did that instill confidence in um, in them that you could actually perform the role yeah yeah um, yeah no I drew I drew on my last placements experience a lot. I, at school, not at school, at uni, I also did a few assignments and group um, assessment pieces on oh, just working, uh, working with different cultural groups yeah. and projects. And that actually really helped with my understanding of what the role could entail. And while I've been working, I've drawn on just the group process from those assessment pieces being completed. Um, the actual content of those, um, in my third year, I wrote about rural OT skill set and rural OT working with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders. And half of the people that I see in my work are identify as Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander. Yep. So in my interview, I was able to say, I've had a look at this. I feel like I really understand all the nuances within this role yep. as much as I can as a newly starting your team. Sure. Um, but I think I was able to demonstrate that this was my, this wasn't a an, an genuine interest of mine. It, it was something that I'd done at uni I'd, I'd chosen to explore that area, um, yeah. and I felt like I had already taken the first steps in uh, 
um, how to conduct myself in that role. Yeah, no, that, 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 that's, that's well said, yeah. Um, and, and I kind of want to unpack that a little bit more with uh, working, working with uh, people, in particular people from diverse cultures. I mean, how important would you say that is for students to understand that? Um, you know, regardless of whether you're working in a rural setting where you are working with many di diverse cultures or in an urban setting where, in fact, you could be doing the, the same thing in the multicultural societies that we live in. How, how important are those soft skills like people skills and um, emotional intelligence and things like that? How much have you um, drawn on those to, to perform your role well? I couldn't survive in my role if I didn't, if I wasn't pretty skilled in those areas. I think in my role in particularly, um, it's just so, it's so important with my very vulnerable clients to make sure that you're communicating well, to be like intelligent emotionally about where they might be at and um, how to phrase things. And with my colleagues to they're very understanding. I work with social workers and other allied health people, but um, they're pretty switched on. And I think like they're pretty switched on when it comes to people skills. Yep. And I think I would stand out if I was someone that didn't didn't invest time in reflecting on um, on how I was coming across, um, on how I was communicating, um, because it's just so important yeah. to, to be understood and um, to come across the right way in a workplace. Yeah particularly mine yeah and now that's that's really interesting so you, you're talking about a lot of things are you talking about teamwork communication and um, you know just sort of understanding people and, and building relationships and, and rapport which are very very important but I think oftentimes um, as a student you don't necessarily realize you're developing those skills but um, but indeed you, you are through your degree and then you're constantly um, honing them and sharpening them once you into the workforce even more so it, it kind of never stops and you and I think the way that you've talked about um, working with the other allied health people and, and social workers as well too um, it, it really is a good exemplar of of the constant learning and the constant um, uh, development that you have along with your colleagues as well and working with them something I did was reflecting on was how uncomfortable but how important group yeah. Group. I think that's the uh, bane of every student. Yeah, I, <laughs> at the time, I, I, I could see value in it, but I thought this is really, like, this is really <laughs> uncomfortable. Um, I had some great group, prep, like, I had some great experiences, but I also had some really tricky ones. But they actually really helped me with dealing with workplace conflict and negotiating and... Yeah. Um, being able to reflect on myself and how I may have come across and how I could better myself. So as uncomfortable as that experience <laughs> was, I, I really needed that. Yeah. Even though I thought I was a great team player, sometimes it's an issue and other times it's a few people around you. And if you've gone through that already, um, I think it's just so valuable when you step into the workplace because yeah. you are going to deal with that yep. on a daily basis. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't get easier any easier in the real world. That's what I always tell students as well. So um, now, again, very pertinent advice. Love the points on conflict management. And, um, Dropped uh, out, sorry. Uh, I was just going to say, um, I think that's really great advice to students um, and it doesn't it doesn't get any easier in the real world that you have to work with people on a daily basis and I love the the point on you know conflict management and you know just people management in general and, and your own self-reflection and development I think that's that's really um, really great insight um, and and so on that kind of what what advice would you give students that are preparing to enter the professional world um, you know maybe maybe with an OT but just in in general what are there's two or three pieces of advice you could give them um, or things that even looking back on your uni experience that you wish you would have taken advantage of more to develop your skill sets. Is there any, any sort of comments around that area? Uh, uh, definitely. Um, I think networking is huge, both learning how to network
network and continuing to network. So consolidating these relationships and taking on opportunities. I wish that I networked more at uni uh, because I needed, I stepped into a role and I needed to do that from day one. Even beforehand applying for jobs, I, yeah, I, I think that um, I missed out on a few things um, because I didn't know what, I didn't understand the value in having people both, you know, inside, within OT and yep. then kind of just outside of OT um, who could help me in my journey. Yep. Um, and then two, having, having mentors who were already within the field and looking out for opportunities and things like that. Yeah. And, and what um, advice would you give students preparing for an interview or looking for jobs? Role playing? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah. um, that's probably coming more from me um, being someone who studied drama. But yeah. um, I, think, I, I think it's important to, uh, to, to come across, to, to project yourself honestly. Um, you do you the best. That's a good way to put it. Yeah, um, when I was applying for positions, I thought, right, what's, what do I want out of this role um, and what skills can I bring to the role? Um, and when you're writing, I had a few people say, oh, I, I applied for this job, interviewed, and I think, I, I think that they had different expectations about who I would be. Mm. Um, and on reflection, they said, actually, I was trying to be someone else in my application. Mm. Um, no, that's, that's really good advice, I think. Yeah, it's just to, just to be honest with yourself. And I like the way you frame that, um, what you want out of the role and what they want out of the role and, and just trying to consider what's the most straightforward way that you can communicate and, and convey that. Yeah. And, and I, also, yeah. I also love your little point there on um, reflecting on your drama background as well too, because that's, that's skill sets that you've picked up as well that you're combining with your... Yeah with your OT type uh, knowledge and skill set, and they both helped you move forward. So, so again, I think, um, yeah, just encouraging students to think about um, all the skill sets that they've collected over, over time and how that, that can be useful is, is um, definitely something that you, um, that you kind of symbolize, actually, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, that's, um, that's true. Uh, so just another point um, with kind of, Deals in with the networking. Mm. Um, having a mentor or someone that you would admire or can you can see yourself being in the future, just while you're doing a, your degree and then just after your degree, having someone there who can give a bit of guidance and encouragement to you and is either in the field or very very close to that um, is something that I I did have in a few. Um, mm. My lecturers were very inspiring, but um, I had two people, someone who'd been through OT a few years before me, yep. and my mom's best friend, who was an old school OT, who I had to speak to and to help with that with that career pro like progress when I was applying for jobs, and even now I touch base with them. I think um, it's never too early to to talk to someone and say, hey, would you mind if I gave you a call? I find you really interesting. I find you actually really <laughs> inspiring. Um, I would just love to talk to you more about these things or kind of guide me. Um, yeah. Often people take that as a compliment. I don't yeah. think people say, no, go away. Um, yeah, I would agree. And again, very, very sound advice. And I think people often would find it flattering. And um, if students just took a little bit of initiative to do something like that, it, it um, I think helps serve them really well. And, and you're confirming that. So um, again, really, really sound. Um, so I'll kind of end things a bit here and wrap things up a bit. But with, with what, is, what is your favorite thing about your job? What is the you know, the most rewarding thing or what's, what's the, the funniest thing or the, you know, what, what do you love? What do you love about it? If you can sort of sum it up. Every day is different. It is, I have not had even the same five minutes in my job. <laughs> it's just, it's so, it, it's ever evolving, ever changing. I really like that. I think that's very exciting for me. Um, and I think it really 
suits my personality as well. I, um, I'm someone who likes to be organized, but I really like flexibility. Uh, I really like, I really like things changing and having new challenges. The most exciting part of my job is seeing little kids or parents having success. Yeah. Like just ha- seeing, seeing, I had a session yesterday, I held a therapy session yesterday. The girl that I was with has only ever produced one letter in her life. And with my guidance, she produced four and she practiced four. And her mom was sitting beside me and was gobsmacked this that this girl had persisted mm. and copied these these letters and this girl was so proud of herself and I thought, this is what I love about my job. Oh, that's that's um, fantastic. Yeah, and I think within within OT lots of lots of OTs would say, actually it's my clients who make it and it's them having mm. moments where they're thrilled about achieving something that they didn't think they could or they extend on and on and develop or um, something that they, they thought they couldn't or maybe have no idea that they could, could do. Um, I also have really enjoyed working with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. I've got a family out in Yarraba, actually, which is about 50 minutes drive from Cairns in an Aboriginal community, and it's taken me probably six months to be accepted by them. Yep. Um, they 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 are just very different, and they see me as a um, as a white privileged European. Sure. Um, but I think through my just through through um, being present, um, asking them about their lives, sharing my own life, and being open to that, um, being honest with them. And presenting myself as me, as a respect, you know, respectful person, um, I have so enjoyed being accepted by by that family and that community, um, and that's not always easy to do. No, um, that's that's mm-hmm. that's a brilliant way to finish. Actually, I mean, I think I think that experience in itself is. Um, probably unbelievably fulfilling and unbelievably rewarding. And um, again, definitely such a uh, an interesting experience to pass on to our students and um, that, that you get to have and a, a privilege for you to, to get to experience that in fact. So um, thank you so much for your time today, Anna. We, we really appreciate it. And um, I think the, the, the sort of the stories that you've told, the examples that you've given, the skills that you've shared, I think will be so valuable for, our, um, for not just OT students, but all students. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Yeah, it's been, it's been a pleasure. Thank you.